In this video, we will talk about circuit diagrams. These are the language we use to represent circuits pictorially or using symbols when we are drawing them on paper to analyze them. So you need to be literate or fluent in this language of circuit diagrams to understand what these symbols mean when you are getting started with circuits. So these symbols in a circuit diagram are used to represent physical circuit components. It kind of saves us from drawing a photorealistic image. We use symbols instead. For example, this symbol over here on the left represents a battery. And this symbol over on the right represents a resistor, which is a component that has electrical resistance. We talked about resistance as a quantity in the previous video. These components are connected by wires that are represented as lines. So this line does not represent a distinct component. It is a wire which we usually model as something that has zero resistance. So in real life, wires, if I can spell resistance properly, in real life, wires do have some very small resistance to them. That resistance is not negligible when you're talking about very long wires, for example, for things like power transmission. But for these short wires, we usually just assume that they have a negligible resistance or R equals zero. Now, again, each one of these symbols represents a physical thing. So if I was to look at what this circuit would look like in real life, you'll have to accept my apologies for my artist rendering here. I might have something like a battery, which is connected to a resistor, which are these little, not quite cylindrical, kind of figure eight shaped parts. And those would be connected by wires like this. And just like in the physical circuit, we would have electrical current flow from the battery through the wires, through the resistor, and back to the battery. In the diagram, we have the flow of current through our symbols and our wires. If you're confused about the direction of that current going from positive to negative, we'll talk about that more in a future video. Now, something that is very important to understand and tends to trip some students up at the beginning is that the physical arrangement of the circuit diagram does not necessarily need to match the physical arrangement of the physical circuit when you're building it in a lab. It is the electrical connections that matter. For example, I have my circuit diagram here drawn with the battery on the left and the resistor on the right. Usually in textbooks, things are kind of drawn from left to right with current flowing in a clockwise manner. But if I just mirror my physical circuit, so for example, the resistor is over here on the left and the battery is on the right, I'm still gonna have current flowing electrically in the same direction. It's going from the positive terminal of the battery through the resistor and to the negative terminal of the battery. So even though I flipped that around, electrically I haven't changed anything. We're gonna talk more about series and parallel connections in a future video, but for example, right now, I'm just going to add a second resistor to this circuit that is in parallel to the first one. And that doesn't mean that the physical resistor needs to physically be in parallel in a geometric sense to the first resistor. What matters is these electrical connections. So say for whatever reason, I go put this one in at a 90 degree angle relative to the first one, electrically that is still in parallel. So again, a lot of students when they get started out building circuits think that the physical circuit needs to be arranged the same way the circuit diagram is but that is not true. It's the electrical connections that matter. And you can also rearrange the circuit diagram. And again, what matters is the electrical connections and not the physical arrangement of parts. So for example, I could redraw this diagram like this, where I keep my first resistor like that, but I draw the second one like this. And you might say, oh, well, you moved it. Those aren't physically in parallel anymore. How are they still in parallel? But again, and again, we'll talk more about what series and parallel mean in a future video. If I look at my electrical connections and the path current takes in both of these circuits, that's the same. It comes from the battery, then it sort of splits here and goes through the two resistors, and then it merges again down here and goes back to the battery. In this circuit, those electrical connections are still equivalent. It comes here, then it splits, goes through these two resistors, and then merges again at this point and goes back to the battery. So the shape of the wires, remember that we are assuming those wires have zero or negligible resistance, doesn't really matter. You could get crazy with it. And in practice, there's really no reason to do this, but say I drew my wires like this, 
Okay, this is just some crazy funky looking circuit with funny shaped wires, but ultimately, electrically, this circuit is still the same as this circuit. So, given everything I just said, I have a question for you. Are these two circuits equivalent? I have the circuit I drew on the previous slide with two resistors like this. What if I take one of those resistors and instead of just rotating it, I move it over here? Are these two circuits still electrically equivalent? Pause the video here, think about it for a minute, then come back for the answer. No cheating, if you haven't already paused the video, pause it and think about it for yourself. Okay, the answer is that yes, these two circuits are electrically equivalent. Again, don't worry about the physical arrangement. The fact that I've moved this resistor over here to the left doesn't matter. What matters is where the connections are and where the current flows. Again, here I have current flowing in to this point and then it's gonna split, go to this resistor and over to this one and then it merges again at this point and goes back to the battery. And we're going to talk about something in a future video called Kirchhoff's Current Law that talks exactly about what current does at junctions or nodes like this. And over here in this circuit, it might not look like it, but I actually have the same electrical setup where I have current come from the battery. It then splits, goes through the two resistors separately, and then merges again at this point and goes back up there. It might help to think about the physical circuit in this case if you're having trouble visualizing how these are the same. Again, think about a circuit with a battery and two physical resistors connected by wires to the batteries. So I have wires going over to this resistor and say two different wires going over to this resistor. I can pick this resistor up and move it over there physically, right? And electrically, I haven't changed anything or where the wires are connected. My wires are still connected to the battery and then to this resistor here. So picking it up and physically moving it over there doesn't change anything electrically. You can think about the diagram in the same way. I have just picked this resistor up and moved it over there, which kind of rearranged the wires, but did not change any of the electrical connections. So again, usually when you see things in introductory textbooks they're usually drawn with the battery or power source on the left and things kind of flow from left to right so it can kind of trip you up when things are rotated or moved around but you have to be careful to find out if the electrical connections are all equivalent and the circuit is actually the same so in future videos we'll be learning about more symbols as we need them things like switches capacitors and inductors but for now the main things we're gonna be talking about involve batteries and resistors, so make sure you are comfortable with these symbols, what they represent, and what it means when we physically connect them with wires.